NASA is planning on sending astronauts back to the moon and then on to Mars, remember? All right, well, here's a question for you. Where are they going to live once they get there? And most likely, during the first few missions, astronauts will live on the spacecraft that got them there. But as they begin to stay for longer and longer periods of time, NASA's really going to need to provide some permanent living quarters. So are we talking condos? Are we talking apartments on the moon? Not quite. What will astronaut housing look like on the moon and Mars? And how will it be constructed? Let me tell you. Right now, the leading candidate for moon and Mars habitats are something called inflatable structures, like these guys right here. Now, these structures are kind of similar to those giant blow-up bounce houses you might find at your state fair or at a birthday party. However, the inflatable structures that NASA's looking at are as tough as nails. They're hard as steel, and they're able to withstand the rigors of space as well as the different environments of Mars and the moon. I spoke with Judith Watson at NASA Langley to find out how these inflatable structures are going to work. Inflatables have been around for a long time. If you go back as early as the early satellites like the Echo, that was actually a balloon that we orbited all in space. So it's an inflatable structure. As early as the 1960s, Werner von Braun was considering using inflatables on a space station orbiting the Earth. So they've been around for a long time. Uh, more recently, in the 90s, we started looking at a possibility of one as part of space station to give the astronauts a little bit more room. So it's not that uncommon. It's been around for a while, and now we want to take it and take a look at it. Is it good enough for the astronauts to live in on the moon? We're actually looking at materials like Kevlar and Vectran, which are very sturdy fabric materials. We use a bladder that's a polyethylene coated type material, so it's sort of a rubber coating to it to help hold the atmosphere in. Your Kevlar, your Vectran, which is like webbing, acts as a restraint layer and holds the load. So you have a very sturdy fabric material holding in the atmosphere. Then you put other layers on top of that to protect it thermally from the changes in temperature. It gets quite hot and quite cold on the moon. We also have to look out for radiation problems for the crew. The moon is going to be like living on a vacuum. So you don't have an atmosphere. We don't have air. We have to take that with us. We have the micrometeoroid threat, which means there's small little rocks, varying sizes, that come through very fast at very high speeds, much faster than even a bullet comes through on Earth. Um, that can hit the, the structure and punch a hole in it. And that's the same whether it's steel, composite, or an inflatable structure. So whatever we put up there, we have to put up a protection layer to protect against that. Jesus, I have to tell you, I'm dying to touch that, just to see if I can kind of push it. And oh, can, can we go over sure, and sure take a look? Come on over. It's a, it can be as hard as steel. Right now, it's only pressurized like 0.1 PSI. Right. We want to go to 9 PSI. So that's like going from 1 to 100. So it gets a lot stiffer. So if you push on this, you can push on it a little bit. Yeah, it has a little give to it. It has a little give. But in reality, once you really bring it up in pressure, the way that it's going to be on the moon, it's going to be as hard as steel. To give you an example of it, here's my trusty basketball. Mm -hmm. Basketballs are basically inflatables in their own right. They have a certain type of material on them. They're actually even coated with rubber, not unlike that we're going to coat the inside of this guy. And if you think about it, they're pretty darn hard. They are. So they can bounce. So it's going to be a very similar principle. We're going to put enough pressure in there that this thing's going to be very hard. Judith, if I'm an astronaut on the moon, how do I get into an inflatable structure? If it's pressurized, when I walk into it or go into it, isn't it going to affect the pressure? It will, and that's why we have airlocks. So if you want to step around this way, I can show you the airlock and how it operates. Then we can open the door, and you can step inside. There you go. Oh, wow, this is amazing. Earlier you were talking about the bladder. Yes. Okay. Describe what you mean by the bladder of, of this structure. Okay, the bladder is this inside layer. It's uh, coated in polyethylene, which is like a rubber, and that's to keep the air from going out. The idea is we don't want this even leaking a little bit. Uh, all, all, anything in space is going to leak a very small amount. Right. So we want them to keep their air as long as possible. So we've got that on the inside. And it usually doesn't maintain the structure, the tension that's caused by the air. It's just here to protect the air from going out. Okay. So it's a little bit larger, so there we get little wrinkles sometimes if it's not totally inflated it's like it is right now. It's very stretchable. Very stretchable. So that's what the inside is made out of. All right, Judith, I think we're equalized. Are we ready okay. to go? Sure thing.
so cool. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. I'm very happy to show it to you. So we know NASA is not just going to send up these inflatable structures to the moon or Mars without testing them first. But where on Earth do you test these structures to make sure they can withstand the rigors of space? NASA packed an inflatable structure habitat and sent it down to McMurdo Station, Antarctica, where the focus was to see how easy it was to deploy and how it held up under those harsh conditions. A small group unpacked and set up the inflatable, then began to inflate it. Once the inflatable was laid out and secured, about six minutes later, it was fully inflated and ready to be used. This is good news because although the conditions are tough down in Antarctica, it will probably be just a little bit harder on the moon, where astronauts have to carry their own oxygen and work inside bulky spacesuits. You may wonder if this inflatable structure can actually hold up on the moon and Mars. Why doesn't NASA just send up rigid structures? Well, there are a lot of reasons, but two of the most important are storage and weight. Right now, this huge inflatable structure can fold up into a very small space for shipment to the moon and it's considerably lighter than rigid structures. Now this is important. To land one pound of supplies on the lunar surface, NASA must launch 125 pounds of hardware and fuel to get it there. Another benefit is that this inflatable structure can be taken down and redeployed multiple times, permitting exploration beyond the initial landing area. So it looks like NASA is on the right track.